Will Epic Universe be too Disney-like? And what is everyone getting wrong about Epic Universe? Hey everybody, Rick and Nikki here. We're going to take a moment and talk about those two things, plus give our reactions to the Epic Universe Lord of the Rings rumors. But first up, is Epic Universe going to be too tame? Is it going to be too Disney-like? Right. We had heard a couple things um, on Facebook. There's been some, you know, threads and some chats about, is Epic Universe going to be too much like Disney World? Some people have some concerns. Mm -hmm. But what do we think? Let's take a moment and share that with you. I think Epic Universe is going to be the most Disney-esque theme park that Universal does. Okay. Um, And the reason for that is so large, Mm -hmm. they have to get in a lot of people. Um, I think their target audience is our guest pool will be um, those people or families that go to Disney's Magic Kingdom. Right, exactly. So I think it will be more tame and more Disney-like than any of the other Universal theme parks, especially Islands of Adventure. Right, and along that same thread of um, pulling in more people, you're talking about like different age groups, right? So pulling in maybe a younger crowd and then not ignoring even the grandma and grandpa type of crowd as well, you know, where the rides are a little bit more um, entertainment-esque mm-hmm. versus hard on the body, maybe. Like G-forces and speed. Exactly. What I'm saying is they need the whole family. Mm-hmm. They, mean, they need mom and dad. They need the little sibling, the little brother or sister who is in elementary school, maybe early elementary school. Mm-hmm. They need the older sister or brother that's in middle school and a big brother or sister that's in high school, plus grandma and grandpa. Right, so they've got to appeal to a wider range of audience. And I kind of feel like they're even moving in that direction even with some of the rides as well, um, with like, say, Minions, Mm -hmm. with the new attraction, you know, coming in and things like that. I think that they're, um, they did hit Velocicoaster, and now they're kind of balancing it with a younger, maybe, generation or younger group with Minions. Well, if you're thinking about that audience I just described, Mm -hmm. mom, dad, the siblings in every grade level, right? And grandma, grandpa. Mm-hmm. Well, that that's Disney's crowd. That's it Magic sure Kingdom's is. crowd. That's what makes it so, I think, appealing. Other than maybe, I would say, um, you know, the nostalgia factor. Mm-hmm. But um, I do think that Disney does a very good job of being able to pull from all age groups, and not just that, but also, I would say, even body types. You're talking like, you know, the very tall to the you know tiny little kid to um, the bigger... Stocky you know, guys like me. Right. Um, so, you know, I think that Disney does a really good job of that and that, you know, if, if Epic Universe wants to be competitive in that way, let's just say, and they need to pull from that huge, you know, audience that maybe they haven't put so much, you know, um, thought... Well, a lot, of, a lot of Disney attractions into? don't have, like, very stringent, um, like, size and height requirements. Right. Um, you know, little ones can go on a lot of rides, um, you know, more accommodating for bigger people. Mm-hmm. Um, Even people with like physical disabilities as well. Yeah. Um, you know, makes it a little bit easier to maneuver in and out of um, ride vehicles. And if you, you know, if you contrast that to Universal Parks, mm-hmm. especially Islands of Adventure, um, a lot of height requirements because of the roller coasters and the restraints in the roller coasters. You have to be a, a certain height for the restraints to work. Correct. Um, and just like uh, if you're a bigger, uh, bigger or stockier person, maybe you have problems with those restraints. Not mm-hmm. just being too young or too short, right. but being, being too large for the uh, restraints to connect and have you fit in properly. Or even too tall. If yeah. you think about it, we, we've had subscribers who have been like, you know, what, 6'4", and they can't ride Rip Ride Rocket or something like that, 6'5". Mm-hmm. And um, so, you know, taking all those into consideration, it's smart, I think, a smart practice for you know, epic. So yeah. that might cause it to be a little bit more. A little more tame, a little more family friendly, yeah. more, a little more Disney-esque. In a way, exactly. <sighs> Throwing their own spin on it, of course. Uh, yeah, it's just, just because, um, you know, those universal rides can be more restricting. Mm-hmm. And I, There's plenty of rides at, uh, like Magic Kingdom that I don't know if they even have a height requirement. Right. And not only that, but I mean, you're not talking like it's going to be this massive coaster park. I mean, because th- even there's full on adults not a roller coaster that park. Um, don't like roller coasters. So True. you want to be able to appeal to the entertainment factor as well. Mm-hmm. Because um, it's so large, um, they don't want to raid their own 
audience, guest audience, mm-hmm. from islands and from studios, they want to take the Magic Kingdom family and bring them to Epic Universe. Therefore, it has to be more accommodating for different ages mm-hmm. and sizes. Yeah, so, for sure. I can see that. I can I can definitely see that. So I'm not upset with that because there's times, when, you know, there's days when just my – my own feeling on things is I want to ride the Veloc- Velocicoaster and I want to like do all the adrenaline rides and I want to go really fast. And then there's days when I'm just like, hey, I just want to chill out yeah. and enjoy a, a, show, r- a show or a walk a, around the park or a ride show, yeah. you know, where you're just you're being entertained on the ride. Mm-hmm. You know, I enjoy that as well. So it's, you know, I think a, a healthy balance of it all would would be, you know, a positive way to go well if we think about what we what we think we know about epic universe so far it does seem to be more family friendly just take super nintendo world for example Mm -hmm. that has to be family friendly i mean just you think about it now obviously i grew up with nintendo and i'm i'm not a little kid anymore but um you think about that land you want it to be like kid friendly and family friendly Mm -hmm. think about the um the attractions there um, Yoshi's rumored, Adventure. Rumored attraction. Well, some of so these far. we know. Some, well, yeah, that's Some true. of Nintendo is set. That's true. Um, we know about Yoshi's Adventure. Mm-hmm. That is a very family-friendly ride. I think of it kind of like um, the High in the Sky trolley okay. at Islands of Adventure, that type of family-friendly ride. Gotcha. And then you have Mario Kart, which is not like uh, a racing uh speed coaster, something mm-hmm. like that. Mm-hmm. It's more in line with like the video game, any type of like speed that you're going to get in Mario Kart, which when you play the game, it looks like you're going fast. Right. It's going to be all like optical illusions with the speed. I got you. you. Kind of like playing the game in real life. Right. But it's not going to be physically taxing on your body. Right. might right. be visually taxing. So, so it should be um, pulling a, a lot of people for that ride. Okay. And then even the roller coaster in Super Nintendo World, um, Donkey Kong's coaster. Mm-hmm. Um, we don't think it's going to be high on like thrill factors as far as speed and G-forces. Right. Um, with that uh, illusion of jumping the track, I think that's going to be your thrill. It's okay. going to get more of an illusional thrill. So it's more of an entertainment type of ride. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, and then we move on to like um, Monsters World. Right now, here's where now there is rumored to be a, a spinning coaster going in. Mm-hmm. So those aren't like real intense, but a spinning coaster is rumored and a dark ride. I would hope though, since Universal is kind of known for Halloween Horror Nights. And then Disney is known at Magic Kingdom for the Haunted Mansion. I would exp- I would hope that the dark ride at Epic Monsters World would be in between the level of the Haunted Mansion, which is really, I mean, that's so family friendly. Right. And between Halloween Horror Nights, which is not so family friendly. Exactly. Well, I mean, if you think about it, um, like, let's, let's just say the Monsters Cafe. Super entertaining in there, visually kind of exciting. Um, and then it, it's got a bit of a nostalgia factor, too, for people, you know, with those old-timey monster movies. So, and if it has, like, a little, a slight little jump scare in there every so often, would hope, it would be I kind would, of fun. Yeah, I would hope, so, like, two or three, like, real jump scares Yeah. versus you don't get any, like, real scares in, like, Disney's Haunted Mansion. Right, exactly. Even so, like, remember they used to have these the scare actors in Kong's Q? Yeah. Something like that. Just jump out at you and go boo. Yeah, exactly. Rah. Something fun like that. You know, I think that um, if if the rumors are true and it does end up being that, I would be very yeah, that's excited. That's the that's not confirmed. but Right. I'd be very, very excited to um, see how they do that ride for sure. And then if we think about the new Wizarding World of Harry Potter that mm-hmm. is going into Epic, we, we know what's going to happen. We, we have physical examples of universal's wizarding world right we know what we we know what to expect exactly awesomeness yeah. <laughs> um, so is that is that too tame too family friendly no it's, it's going to be your typical well, harry potter experience that you get from universal right because i mean if you look at escape from green gods it's a little amped up, um, it, but it's that, a, that it's drop. Kind of, the drop at the beginning is exactly, kind of and it's dark, and you know, then you've got it, it's a it's a nice little hybrid coaster. Yeah, you right? enjoy the show and the thrills of the three D. Right, a couple is you know, it's a tiny little launch at the end, some spinning and a drop. So, I mean, you know, that appeals to maybe a wider range than let's just say you know a completely thrill coaster kind of like, person, like Velocicoaster. coaster. Right, exactly. And then over, and what? then we have uh, the other land would be what I think is the most kid friendly and the one that kind of at least on the surface before i actually get in there seems to be a little too family friendly for me that would be the how to train your dragon world which i wish would be more like a dreamworks world so you have dragon and you have shrek and you have secret life of pets Mm -hmm. i wish it was that it's rumored to be just how to train your dragon 
and so and it does have a roller coaster. Right. And I think the word on the street about the roller coaster is to expect something along the lines of Hagrid's, but dialed down maybe a notch or two from Hagrid's. That's well, that's kind of the, the word on the street how that coaster is going to be. Right. Now, I mean, how to train your how to train your dragon doesn't necessarily appeal to maybe our generation. Um, so it appeals to a different generation, but I am very excited to see like what they come up with. I do see what you're, what you mean about that might be more geared towards, you know, the, the younger side. Some of the other rumored attractions other than that that coaster, which Mm -hmm. is like I said, Hagrid's maybe dialed down a notch or two. Some of the other rides don't seem that thrilling or exciting to me. It's rumored to go in there. Right. Exactly. But I mean, again, that's what we're talking about is that, you know, it's trying to appeal to a bigger variety of people. Yeah, but for little Jimmy in third grade Mm -hmm. and Sally, who's in seventh grade in middle school, go on and the high school brother who's like, no, that's too kiddie for me. Well, he can go do something else. Go get a snack. This is, it's it's the little kid's turn. You, you, you had your ride. You picked your ride. So there'll be like more variety for the family to pick. Okay, this one's we're we're doing for little Jimmy. Right. Okay, he really loves the How to Train Your Dragon. And then, uh, you know, the other rides might be, hey, little Jimmy, we'll go get you a little popsicle. Because the big brother (laughs) wants to go on this fast roller coaster. (laughs) Well, exactly. So I think that, you know, again, we're talking about balance and, you know, the draw of different generations and stuff. I don't want to dismiss grandmas too much. I know. Uh, I kind of because I've run into I've run into some grandmas at Universal. <laughs> That's true. Uh, you know, in their sixties doing Velocicoaster and stuff. And still so, riding. So Hulk. don't take offense. I know you guys can still do the thrill rides too. Exactly, but I mean, again, uh, appealing to different you know mm-hmm. personality types too. So then we have the hub, which is um, a very the hub is very large. There's plenty of room for uh, one off attractions. Mm-hmm. That, you know, something that have to be themed to an entire land, which I think is great. Which I'm- with the racing coaster. Okay. Is um, space themed, right? Supposed to be space themed. Nice. Um, what that is, who knows? Could it be Star Trek? Oh, I don't want to start a rumor. Don't but, start no. a rumor, but it could be anything. Could if, be a, if I, I would could dream, it, I would love it. I would love that. Oh, I would awesome. think they would want to like an intellectual property, not just be a generic. Here's a space riders, space racers. Right. Exactly. Go go go, speed space racer. <laughs> <laughs> now you're mixing yeah, too much genre. <laughs> um, no, I would so, love it. Oh my so gosh. that is a good opportunity, I think, for other the Universal to sprinkle in some of those big thrill attractions that they're known for, like at um, Islands of Adventure. Okay, makes sense. But to me, to answer the question, is it going to be too tame? I don't think so. Just, we haven't talked about shows and stuff. Right, the exactly. plenty of entertainment like that for people. For sure. Um, but... I don't think it will be too tame. I think it will be, it's going to be more tame than like Islands of Adventure, that's for sure. And to me, it will be the most Disney-like theme park because it needs to be. They need to pull, they, their target audience, like I said, is not to get families to come from Islands of Adventure to Epic. Right. They want people at Magic Kingdom, Disney's Magic Kingdom, to come to Epic. Right. That's they, what they want to mm-hmm, appeal to a broader Not trying base. to raid their own base right exactly now how big is it gonna, is it going to be again it's um well if you look at the the land that they have the amount of land they have mm-hmm. it is bigger than islands studios and city walk combined that's insane that's, that's that a hub lot. area looks, it's huge that yeah exactly the carousel that you were yeah. talking about that might be coming in i'm excited to see that as well and there's two lands for expansion uh-huh there is and you know what? That's a good segue to the next piece. Okay. Uh, let's just go. Instead of talking about the thing everyone is getting wrong about Epic Universe, mm. let's talk about this rumor of Lord of the Rings coming to Epic Universe. And what do we think of that? Right. Now, this rumor is not new. It's been around for a long it's time. Always- and a lot of different sources and blogs and um, articles have been written about this specific rumor. People have been talking about Lord of the Rings coming to a theme park or Universal um, 12 years at least. Mm-hmm. So yeah. it's not, this is not fresh, not a fresh rumor. Even during the time that I've been vlogging, mm-hmm. um, I've gotten bits of information about, oh, there's going to be this one ride that's kind of like Spider-Man, but can go upside down. Right. Stuff like that. So within the past five years, ev- just every so often it sprouts up and it's sprouting up now because one, um, Amazon is going to have a new TV show. We'll check it out. We'll see if we like it or not. I don't right. know. I'll give it a chance. Right. Um, I don't know how much they're in the the real source material. I think they might be going off on their own. So we'll see. Uh, but I digress. Okay. They, it will be. So that's kind of bringing Lord of the Rings back into the forefront. Mm-hmm. 
And then um, the fact that they're building a new theme park. Right. You know, so there's space for it. Exactly. So this is in, a, in addition to an expansion of the base that we already kind of have a feeling we know what's going to be in there. So, so we're talking about a long a, time. A while from now. This would not be when they first opened. Before for this sure. rumor becomes true. Like us talking about it now, people for, will forget that we've talked about it now. Right. Because you have what uh, Epic is supposed to open before the summer of 2025, I think it's the phrase Universal uses, before the summer of 2025. Okay. And then it's not going in right away. It's for an expansion. So how many years after Epic has been open will Universal feel like they need to expand? Right. How many years after that? Exactly. So. Well, how do you feel of it? How do you feel about I, Lord of the Rings coming in? I would. It possibility. I, well, it, I, rather than being a standalone attraction, mm -hmm. I think it does need its own land because, oh, you know, yeah. Middle Earth is so uh deep and rich you know for sure i mean and you know you hobbiton and mordor and yeah riverdale exactly. there's so much you could do oh for sure so it needs its own land oh it needs so plenty of space i would be i would love for lord of the rings i love the original um peter jackson trilogy uh -huh. awesome movies um, <laughs> i'm going based on the books so i for me personally oh, go ahead i'll let you finish no, you go ahead no. well for me personally um that was one of my big kid books that i read when i was um got a little bit older and so i have a special place in my heart for lord of the rings and hob and the hobbit um and i do just like you i like the lord or um peter jackson yeah you know films oh, of it, it was, yeah it was phenomenal so i i I would not be upset at all if they brought it. it in. However, um, it, I think it's so far away from actual happening. I'm not going to get my hopes up. I'm just going to live my life. <laughs> if it happens, if it comes, it comes. Right. Okay. But it'd be great if it did. It really would be great. I would love it a lot. I'm not holding my breath. Okay. <laughs> now, before <laughs> we move on it. to the, uh, the next segment, which uh -huh. is what everyone is getting wrong about Epic Universe, let's do the comment of the day. Okay. Oh, Epic, a comment we, ha of the we day. have a comment of the day. Okay. It's from FTT. Hmm. And they say, do the parks ever lose their excitement or even get boring when you visit so often? I get this question, or a version of, the, of this question from time to time. Okay. Um, now, he uses the phrase, lose excitement. I'm going to have to say yes. It loses excitement, but it doesn't lose, a, lose its appeal our fun, our enjoyment. I think it's evolved for us. Mm -hmm. um, I don't want to speak for you, um, but I I would say that it's not exciting, but it feels like home. It yeah. feels like a... A new ride is exciting. And yes, exactly. And, you know, um, meeting people in the parks and experiencing the atmosphere and being able to step out of the real world and step into almost like a vacation in and of itself for yeah. a few hours, I think is phenomenal. It doesn't so lose its It doesn't fun. lose that. And enjoyment. Exactly. Um, it's like, you know, people who live in a neighborhood, uh, maybe they just enjoy walking through the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Maybe there's a park nearby and they just enjoy going to that park. Right. It's the same thing for us. This is our park. Right. This is our hometown or, you know, backyard or whatever. Exactly. Where you go places and you say hi to your friends yeah. and, you know, you meet interesting people and, you know, you get to taste fun foods and you get to the experience of, you know, I don't know how many times I could ride Velocicoaster, you know, and, and be bored. I, I would never be bored with well, it. Well, here's what I think about that. You know, the rides stay exciting. They do. I mean, because it's always, you know, like the Hulk, um, Hagrid, mm -hmm. Velocicoaster, Rip Ride Rocket, oh, Mummy, when we get that back. <laughs> um, you know, because it's always, the, it's, you have the speed, you have uh, the G-forces, you have the effect on your body, which is giving you the thrill. Right. That doesn't change. Now, what changes for me or might get uh, tiresome is like some of the shows. Okay. For example, I'll give uh, the Born Stunt Tacular as an example. I love the show. It's an awesome show. It is. I can't go watch that every time I'm there. It's because it's a show. I, I mean, guess. they have a That's few it. little practical practical effects, mm -hmm. you know, with some water hitting you and some wind hitting you, but it's not like feeling G forces on a roller coaster. I can so see where that. you're just I'm sitting, it's like that. watching a movie over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. It's a good movie, but I don't want to watch it every day. Okay. So, um, ride excitement never changes. Um, the fun and just like enjoyment of being in the park is always great. Yep. Exactly. But is it like the first time you're going someplace? No. No. But it evolves. Yeah. And it's a good evolution. It's a, it's really kind of cool. And so thank you for that uh, comment of the day. If yeah. you want to 
uh, leave a comment in this video. Just say like com for comment of the day or do COD and leave me a comment. We're going to try to do this um, every so often. All right. I, I don't want to say every video, but I want to give people an opportunity to have comment of the day okay. that we can share with everyone. And now let's move on to the thing everyone is getting wrong about Epic Universe. Hmm. Now, when it comes to Epic Universe, there's been some discussion recently about the roller coasters going in. Mm -hmm. Uh, specifically because the newest rumored coaster is one in Monsters World, uh, a spinning coaster that's supposed to go in there. So this is the coasters, uh, the four coasters people are counting up. They're going to say the Monsters World spinning coaster. They're going to say Donkey Kong coaster, the Hub Racing coaster, and the How to Train Your uh, How to Train Your Dragon coaster. That's mm -hmm. four, right? But here's the thing: the racing coaster, the Hub coaster, is actually two tracks. That needs to be counted as two. Mm -hmm. So there are actually five rumored coasters going into Epic Universe. So uh, are you trying to say it's kind of like dueling dragons then, yeah. where you had the red side mm -hmm. and then you had the blue side. So you had, you know, fire and ice and, you know, you had two. So, um, it's two tracks. It's two coasters. Don't count that once. That's true. Because I did have a favorite. I did yeah. have a favorite for, you know, the dragon challenge, dueling dragons. Even though when it, it opens, they made list just one wait time. And one, one entrance. Yeah. You, got, you have to pick which coaster you're going on. We're assuming. And um, the coasters, there will be some sections where they kind of mirror each other. Right. But there are will be certain parts that are different on d the two different tracks. Uh, you have a different experience on each coaster. And believe me when I say, after you ride both sides, both coasters, you will have a favorite. So that is two coasters. You will like one better than the other. <laughs> Oh, goodness. I don't know. Now, you might think I'm being too technical. I think I'm just being actual. <laughs> there are actually two I, tracks, two coasters. I can see. I can see your point of view. I can see where you're coming from. But I can also see the point of there's only one entry and one, one wait, wait time, time and, yeah. you know, things like that. It's so. two different experiences. Therefore, I can see that. right now there are five rumored coasters <laughs> going into Epic. Okay, okay. <laughs> so do us a favor leave, leave us a comment mm -hmm. what you think about you know will epic be too tame will it be too disney like and what do you think of my math <laughs> adding up i have added up five rumored coasters let me know what you think about that 4.5 <laughs> <laughs> and with all of that being said don't miss the magic don't miss the fun thanks for watching rex flicks and now click that subscribe button his name is Rick, her name is Nikki, showing how theme parks are done. Don't miss the magic, don't miss the fun, hit subscribe.